Good afternoon and welcome once again to Mercer Locomotive and Supply. Uh, Dave Sklavi, the train man here. Got my train man hat on today. Um, been a lot of uh, questions and people ask me, well, how do you make those etchings that you use? And um, it's something that I always wanted to try. And I knew the process but never could get the, uh, or find out where to get the different materials to do such. And uh, I found that Micromark, who makes those small tools and so on, they sell a kit. So I bought the kit just to find out how it's how uh, how to do it and the proper chemicals and so on. And it was very helpful. But um, eventually, wound up buying the chemicals online through a company, and they're they're, they're generally used for lithographs to make lithographs. Printing plates is what they're used for. And uh, you know Robert Dustin, who makes. Uh, some of the number plates and he used to do decals but now he does the just the number plates they're actually a spin-off of his business the printing business that uses um, uh, the photo etching to make the, the prints and he, he actually makes the negatives and then he sends the negatives out and has them done but I'm doing my own and uh, I enjoy doing it and it's, it's very very um, rewarding to be able to make the little plates and so on and everybody told me I couldn't make them deep and all this stuff well I have and I uh, how you get started is first of all you got to start off with a, an artwork and I use AutoCAD believe it or not and today I'm gonna bring them up as close as I can these are this is the artwork for steps that were on the K4 and a lot of locomotives had steps that go up on the side of the boiler to check the generator or in this case it was something to do with the sand dome uh, when you print these out you have to do is you, now I use a I have a Hewlett Packard uh, 8300 which I use for my AutoCAD and so on and it'll print 1117 print but I can set that to photo quality and what you want to do is set it to the highest dots per inch whatever the maximum is and the black as black as possible now these are some plates I made uh, some some good ones, some failures. This one was uh, okay print. This was one I did uh, pretty much what I used on the 1361. That was my final setup, and uh, they came out pretty good. I tried a bunch of different ones. Some of them were failures. Some of them were okay. Uh, with the Micromark kit, they give you a um, the chemicals, which we'll get to in a minute, and. They also give you a film, the resist film, that you have to laminate to, to the material. And that's the most difficult part. Um, they give you a little bit of a, uh, a laminator machine. Just It's the same thing as you would laminate cards with, you know, your driver's license or whatever. And it works the same way, except that it won't take anything thicker than, say, a, a card, like a 25,000 thick brass with the film on it, maybe 30,000, that's about as thick as it'll take through there. I tried to put the 16th through, and it just was, I had to actually push it through to get it to go through. And it didn't have enough pressure and heat to laminate it tight. I tried ironing it, I tried everything. If you don't have the resist on there correctly, it just doesn't work good. Um, there is a spray, I haven't tried that yet, there is a spray you can spray on the metal. That probably worked pretty good. But I was able to find copper which is 1 16th thick, which is the perfect thickness, is nice and heavy duty, that has the resist on it, right on it. And on the back side, you can see here, it's resisted as well. It comes that way already made. This stuff can be, on this side, can be exposed. This is a lacquer or something, some kind of paint on there that caught, uh, stops the, is a stop off so it doesn't etch on the back. In some cases, you may want to etch from both sides. We'll uh, talk about that another time. But, Anyway, uh, this is the way it comes, and it's got a little black um, protective covering on there that I'm going to peel off and then put my negative on top. We'll get to that later. That's the second part. Probably take me a couple of parts to do this video. Um, this is negative. It's kind of shot. It got all messed up, but um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a negative. Now, there's two different kinds of negatives here. There's a positive negative. And it, well, I'm sorry, plates rather. There's a positive plate exposure and a negative plate exposure. There's two different kinds. On a negative plate exposure, like this one, everything that's black 
is going to be etched away. On this one, everything that's white is going to be etched away. Now you have to know what kind of plates you're using. I'm using positive plates. These are considered positive plates, so I want everything that's white is going to be etched away. That's something to remember. Okay, now the chemicals, you're going to use, for the developer, you use sodium hydroxide. Uh, this, what this does is it, it develops the uh, resist, stops it from uh, continuing to develop, and it, it removes everything that isn't developed, which now is going to expose the metal, uh, and then that's what's going to be etched away, the unexposed metal. The, the, etch it, the resist that's still on there is going to literally resist the chemicals and stay raised. Okay, now it's not very expensive. This cord I think cost me like eight bucks. It's pretty cheap. Now when you buy the the Micromark kit, it's like a hundred dollars, a little over a hundred dollars, and um, it, it, it gives you a much smaller, maybe a pint of this stuff. So I was able to find it, and at the end of the video, I'll um, uh, post those places to buy this stuff. Okay, as far as the etching solution, it's ferric chloride. Uh, yes, yes, right. Very chloride, and uh, it's not expensive either. It's very, it, it, it's an acid, but it's not really. Uh, I wouldn't stick my finger in it, but it, it, it's not like sulfuric acid. It's not that strong. But one thing it does do is it stains just about. Uh, you want to put do this in it some place in where it's not going to uh, mess up. Now I'm, I do it right here in my kitchen, right where I make my pasta vazul. And uh, my other dishes that I make here right in the kitchen because I want the water. Now, I do have a sink in the basement, but I'm too lazy to walk and down the steps and work down And there. this came with the Micromark kit. It's a, it's a little plastic tank. It's like a bubbler tank. It's pretty kind of ugly looking from all the ferric chloride stains. But in the bottom of it, that has like a little thing there to uh, some kind of a filter thing that makes air. I think you aquarium people sell them. Stone or something with porosity in it. And this is nothing more than like a little aquarium tank and what that does is it sends bubbles through the ferric chloride and helps the solution to uh, move around and um, agitate the solution it helps the, the etching situation now I've successfully used this pot this container but the better way would be to make something that had the bubble set up built right into it and furthermore most importantly a heating element of some sort to heat the solution to a say maybe a hundred degrees or 150 degrees so not not that hot but warm warm the solution what i used to do is put it in the microwave over here and then pour it in but it would stay only hot for a little while and then it would cool off and then it wouldn't work as well but it now, works much better when it's warm step will be to expose the plate using the negative that we made or the art artwork it's not a negative it's an artwork that we made and we're going to use nothing more than an ordinary light I have over here, just a light. Fluorescent helps. White light versus a, a incandescent. Um, they say you can do it outdoors in the sunlight, but around here it's cloudy most of the time, like maybe out in the promised land where the feeling is laid back and the sun shines most of the time. You can use it outside, but uh, around here in the northeast it's pretty cloudy most of the time and dingy, so you need artificial light. And, and be honest with you, I'd rather use that anyway. So uh, we're going to do that now, and uh, that's part two.